Chris from Russellville writes, I'm 52 and recently inherited a large sum of money. Does that count as income? What do I need to do? What do I need to know about taxes on an inheritance? And how do I know what's best to do with it? Lots of questions in there from Chris. Thanks very much for your uh, question. The first thing we would say, John, is Chris does need to consult a CPA. Anytime there's a big change like that, uh, it is good to talk to a qualified tax professional. And we are not CPAs, but we do know what rules are around different types of inherited money. And the first thing he mentions here is, what do I need to know about taxes on an inheritance? And just the fact that it is, it is an inheritance does not necessarily mean there's going to be any tax. Yeah, there is no inheritance tax in the state of Arkansas. As a matter of fact, there is no inheritance tax anywhere uh, as far as the federal government is concerned or the state government in Arkansas. Now, some states do uh, have an inheritance tax. Arkansas is not one of them. So the money that you are inheriting is not subject to income tax or an inheritance tax. Now, there may have been a tax that needed to be paid by the estate of the person that is willing the money to you or bequeathing the money to you. So, but that's not on you. That's on that estate. So when you get it, though, depending on, you know, what you're looking at and how much it is and, and what you do with it, if you invest that money, then you're going to pay taxes on the earnings of that money the interest that it might earn, let's let's call it dividends and capital gains, taxed at a different rate, but you will have taxes on the invested dollars unless you put it into some type of deferred type account, which you may or may not want to do. But there is no tax on that money actually coming to you. So that's good news. I think that uh, there is also, Scott, I a, a question of how this money is coming to him. Maybe it's life insurance. Maybe it's cash. Maybe it is uh, an appreciated asset that has a stepped up cost basis in value. Again, this is where a, a CPA a tax advisor would come into play here to talk about that. But there is no inheritance tax that he's going to have to pay for. Yeah. Now, moving on from that, I think we really have to think about, okay, so what is the purpose of this money? Uh, if Chris in Russellville says, you know, I don't really know what the purpose is, I think that's the first jumping off spot that we would, would coach him on. Yeah, so do you have some debt? Is that a real place that it could be utilized in your overall financial plan to wipe out some debt? Is it uh, something you're behind on retirement and you'd like to use it to jumpstart your retirement savings? Do you even lack an emergency fund? We have no idea how much uh, money it is. It's a large sum of money to Chris, but can you use some of this to park on the sidelines in cash so that you don't have to go back into debt if you uh, aren't in debt currently or if you use some of this money to wipe out that debt? Uh, you know, and then going back to how the money is received, and John, you kind of talked about this, but we can go into specifics a little bit. I don't know if this is life insurance money. Um, from a tax perspective, generally life insurance is tax-free, right? The death benefit proceeds of a life insurance policy are generally tax-free. So you have no concerns of taxes if that's the case. If it is in an IRA uh, or other qualified plan, there are rules around how you have to withdraw that that are new, only three and a half years old. The Secure, Secure Act back in 2020 changed the way uh, inherited IRAs have to be withdrawn. So if you are receiving this money from a parent or someone that is 10 year was 10 years or more older than you, then the law says you have to withdraw that IRA money over a 10 year period. You can do it uh, in various ways, but at the end of that 10 year clock, it has to all be withdrawn. So if it is a large sum of money, let's say a million dollars, then you're basically saying at best you're going to be able to piece that out $100,000 a year over the next 10 years. And that can be a very significant tax burden because those withdrawals are taxed at ordinary income tax rates. So it, in essence, gets stacked on top of whatever income you made in that year. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, that you have to really take a close look at that if it is a qualified plan, 401k, IRA, or something like that. If it is a Roth IRA that you're inheriting, and then you don't have any tax impact, but you do still have to abide by those RMD rules over the next 10 years. It just simply means you have to move it from the Roth IRA into a non-qualified account. You don't really even have to sell anything to make that happen. So so there's uh, some you know background there. But I think if you think about Chris's situation, Scott, 
I think that you have to, uh, Chris has to assess where he is in life. You, you touched on emergency fund and debt. Let's talk about retirement. You know, Chris, if your retirement has been looking, eh, might be okay, but not so great, this could be a great boost to your retirement to figure into your retirement income plan. Uh, it could be something that you think about from a standpoint of, all right, what is, the be- what is in my best interest in terms of using this money. One thing I will say, Chris, that you should not go do is that is to go nuts and go buy a bunch of stuff uh, because that's one way to get you broke really quickly. Uh, if you think about, Scott, uh, the the impact of sudden wealth on people, yeah. uh, you know, it's well documented that people who win lotteries yeah. are broke in a couple of years because every friend comes out of the woodwork and every so-called friend shows up that you didn't even know was your friend. And, and so everybody loves somebody's just got a lot of money and yeah. so clearly you know chris needs to really think about what his purpose for this money needs to be first and then what he wants it to do for him second yeah and it's good chris that you are considering the taxes and planning around the taxes some forward looking tax planning is always good and again a reminder to consult a cpa thanks for your question chris before we move on though we allow us uh, a little bit of an off-ramp here to kind of talk towards the mentality that is out there about a fear of taxation and you know yeah. here's, here's the deal and, and and i hope everyone hears me clearly you cannot avoid taxation you can only plan to minimize taxation and unfortunately the fear-mongering that goes along with the uh preying on someone who is worried about paying taxes on inherited dollars, retirement dollars, whatever the case may be, has caused people to make some really bad decisions because they're trying to avoid taxation. Be it taxes or market risk or anything of that nature, I was just noticing in the newspaper this past weekend that uh, one of these gold IRA companies is being sued uh, in a in a really uh, a class action lawsuit because people were scared into buying gold as their investment for their IRA because gold has never gone to zero and we're facing economic collapse and all this type of thing. You know, Scott, I've been in this industry for over 30 years and I can't tell you how many times I've heard that every year yeah, that, that right. I've been in this industry mm-hmm. and it hadn't happened yet. And so can it happen? Well, yeah, anything can happen. But here's the deal. You know, those companies, I always ask this question. First of all, if gold is such a great investment, why are they trying to sell you their gold? That's the first question. Secondly, how much do they make? According to this article I read, uh, this one company charged 33% commission. So they lose over a third of their of their dollars uh, to the company. And, and then if gold doesn't perform as well as they think it will, then they lose even more money. And so there's a big class action lawsuit because people sat in front of the TV and were constantly told taxes are going to be a problem and, you know, uh, markets are going to be a problem. So go put your money in this. I don't ever think you should make an investment decision solely because of the tax issue. Yeah. Now, it, are taxes important? Do you want to do everything that you can to minimize taxes? Absolutely. But you're right, Scott. You can only minimize or defer taxation. You cannot avoid taxation in most cases. 